we continue our reading of Milton's Areopagitica. We were around uh, page 196 of my edition, uh, this edition by David Bernstein. Uh, Milton argues against uh, uh, censorship of the press and uh, he traces the historical origin of censorship and uh, he names uh, the uh, pamphlet Areopagitica to remind uh, the parliamentarians that they are being compared to Areopagus. Uh, the uh, Parliament of Athens and the, uh, the uh, which is a you know uh, praise and he uh, argued how censorship did not uh, uh, or was not applied to uh, any historical commonwealth even though it was mentioned in Plato but uh, applying this to the real commonwealth and trying to prohibit uh, publication of books, historically Milton blames the Council of Trent and uh, the uh, index of books that was prepared by the uh, Inquisition, uh, the list of banned books. Uh, he uh, questions the very uh, principle of censoring uh, speech and uh, he argues that if speech or you know publication has to be censored then all aspects of life like uh, food, dress, uh, everything has to be censored and uh, he refers to uh, Bacon's uh, lost Atlantis and uh, Moore's Utopia. Uh, to sequester out of the world into Atlantic and Utopian qualities which never can be drawn into use will not mend our condition but to ordain wisely as in this world of evil in the midst where of God has blessed us unavoidably. So it is no use, Milton says, that uh, we uh, imagine that uh, we are in some utopia or we, were, we are in some lost Atlantis as Bacon and Moore they, they imagine these countries and uh, the, the uh, topos of uh, Plato's Republic which is also in line with uh, this utopian uh, imagination uh, therefore Milton places squarely the reality of this world which is an evil world and uh, in order to live in this evil world uh, it would be wiser to not to be romantic and utopian but to uh, grapple with the reality uh, and to, to confront uh, evil uh, which is there to every action which is good or evil in man at right years were to be under pretense and prescription and compulsion what were virtue but name? What praise could we then uh, do to well doing? What dramatic to be sober, just or continent, and so on. So virtue does not mean anything or will not mean anything. Uh, if people, adults, are to be prescribed, are to be told at every point, at every stage, what is good and what is evil. Uh, which means that you assume that people do not have any discretion. You, you are treating adults like infants. They are not skillful considerers of human things who imagine to remove sin by removing the matter of sin. So just by removing the object of sin, sin cannot be removed. So, uh, sin is therefore a state of mind. Uh, it is not that if uh, the object is removed, this state of mind will change. It is planted uh, in man by God. Uh, the uh, you know, fact that man is prone to temptation. 
because it is by fighting with temptation that man can ex exercise his virtue. Therefore, for the uh, bottom of page 197, Milton appeals, if then the order shall not be vain and frustrated, behold a new labor, lords and commons, you must repeal and proscribe all scandalous and unlicensed books already printed and diverged. After you have drawn them up into a list, that all may know which are condemned and which not, and ordain that no foreign books be delivered out of custody till they have been read over. So in this paragraph Milton is talking about the difficulties of uh, censoring books, the difficulties of uh, uh, implementing this law, uh, because then the censors must also make a list of books which have already been published and uh, they have to mention which books are good, which books are not, uh, which would be a huge task. And not only that, uh, there are books, Milton says, where there are uh, passages which are good and passages which are evil. Therefore, the censor uh, board has to uh, work, has to labor hard in order to find out those passages which are not good and expunge them, which again is a very tall task. Uh, the Christian faith for that was once a schism is not unknown to have spread all over Asia where any gospel or epistle was seen in writing. Uh, if the amendment of manners be aimed at, look into Italy and Spain, where, whether those places be once people the better, the honester, the wiser, the chester, since all the inquisitional rigor that have been executed upon books. So in countries where there is such censorship, there is such uh, inquisition, Italy and Spain, Catholic countries, so in those countries we do not find that there is much, much more virtue than in England. Therefore it is a false uh, belief that by censorship there can be more virtue. I lastly proceed from the no good it can do to the manifest heart is possible. So, so far Milton argued uh, or refuted that censorship can uh, do any good to the commonwealth. Now he further argues that it causes enormous hurt. It actually uh, has a negative impact upon society. Uh, it is in being first the greatest discouragement and affront that can be offered to learning and to learned men. Now what advantage is it to be a man over it uh, is to be a boy at school if we have only escaped the ferula to come under the face of an inhuman. So uh, ferula is a cane or rod used to punish boys and uh, fescue is a, a pointer you know, by which uh, one uh, points a deep letter to the children. So Milton says that we have escaped the rod because we have grown up, we are adults, but then we are coming under the fescue, that is, the pointer. Therefore, uh, it is no good, it is, we are never being treated as adults. He goes on to say that how uh, censorship challenges the freedom of an author. And uh, an author should be able to speak with authority, to write with authority, and that very authority is taken away by censorship. Uh, because, uh, you know, sometimes it also happens that uh, after the book is published uh, or is submitted to the censor board, uh, after that the author thinks of something new and wants to add to his book, which he cannot, because now whatever has been submitted to the censor board, only that will be considered for publication. Therefore, at every step, uh, it kind of shackles the you know, free, you know, the liberty of the author, the freedom of the author in uh, dealing with any topic with seriousness. Uh, again, Milton refers to Francis Bacon. Uh, we will uh, see that uh, Milton is truly the last humanist, and before him, uh, the greatest English humanist we may say was Francis Bacon. 
and uh, obviously Milton feels a kinship with him. Uh, he says, this is some uh, common stuff, and we might add from Sir Francis Bacon that such authorized books are but the language of the times. This is uh, quoted from Bacon's an advertisement touching the controversies of the Church of England, uh, where Bacon says that authorized books, uh, they cannot have uh, any universal truth, they are the language of the times. So only a particular, uh, in a particular period, uh, a particular book is authorized. Therefore, this book cannot bear the stamp of any uh, universal truth. And Milton goes on to say how uh, such censorship will uh, be applied to even uh, thinkers uh, who can think something uh, new or who can uh, think of reforming the way things are. Uh, censors, by uh, definition, they stick to a particular uh, standard uh, conceptualization or uh, definition of scholarship. And anybody who <coughs> wants to reform the ideas Anybody who kind of brings any revolution in thought, uh, such new thought will not be accepted by the censor board. Therefore, it will block all future development in thought and in culture. We can give the example of Knox, uh, the reformer of Scottish uh, Church, and says that the censors would have even stopped Knox from expressing his views. They will not pardon him uh, that, that the sense of that great man shall to all posterity be lost for the fearfulness or the presumptuous rashness of a past functionary license. So a licensor, uh, he cannot be a greater scholar than an important author or an important thinker, but he has the official power uh, which he would abuse, which he would uh, unnecessarily uh, misapply uh, on great writers and thinkers. So Milton looks uh, at censorship in the context of uh, the English national uh, politics and English national uh, uh, environment. And uh, it is very important because uh, we know that in 16th and 17th centuries, uh, the idea of English as a nation uh, was uh, becoming more and more crystallized. And in this treatise, the Reopagitica, Milton takes a lot of pride uh, in announcing that the English are the chosen nation and that there is much more liberty in England than in other European countries. And therefore, uh, the English have a particular responsibility of carrying forward, uh, you know, the pursuit of truth and true religion. So here he says, uh, bottom of page 200, Truth and understanding are not such words as to be monopolized and traded in by tickets and statutes and standards. So this is a reference to tickets or licenses given by Charles uh, to trading companies for monopolies. Um, most Tudor kings in England as well as French kings uh, in the 16th and 17th centuries uh, sold monopolies uh, by uh, two particular companies or two particular individuals and uh, got enormous revenue out of that. So uh, this was a very bad practice uh, as a monopoly we uh, have later realized uh, benefits uh, only a few and uh, creates uh, an unnecessary lack of competition. Uh, where uh, one gets unethical advantage over others. So truth 
and understanding. These are not commodities that uh, some particular person or some particular uh, body, some sensor board can be given the monopoly. But only they uh, have uh, the truth and others do not. We must not thank, uh, think to make a stable commodity of all the knowledge in the land to mark and license in like our broad cloth uh, and our wool packs. Referring to the commodities that England produce, cloth and wool. So as there are monopolies in such commodities, we should not apply the same idea to truth because truth is something abstract. Uh, in this uh, essay, Milton uh, repeatedly refers to truth as an abstract concept. As truth, virtue, these concepts are used again and again and uh, the fact that they are not things, that they are not goods but they are concepts, uh, that is what uh, distinguishes them from other things. <coughs> so Milton tries to uh, you know, draw this line between uh, objects, things and concepts. Now why does he have to uh, make this effort? Because uh, in the 16th and 17th century, uh, commodity culture uh, developed to such an extent that uh, people often uh, disregard uh, human beings and treat them as commodities rather than, uh, you know, uh, human beings. And uh, commodities were treated sometimes as persons. We see an example of that in uh, Decker's Schumacher, Schumacher's holiday. So the importance of understanding the unique nature of intellectual commodities or intellectual goods. Books are intellectual goods. So they cannot be equated with other goods. A few licenses, 20 licensing for this, a few licenses cannot churn out, uh, you know, truth uh, in large number, in large quantity. Uh, Where is to include the whole nation and those that never yet thus offended under such a dissident and suspectful prohibition? May plainly be understood what a disparagement it is. So much the more, when as debtors and delinquents may walk abroad without a keeper, but unoffensive books must not start forth without a visible jailer in their uh, titles. So, uh, People who actually commit crimes, sometimes they escape the jailer, but harmless books, they seem to be jailed. Even their titles, you know, have to be approved by the censors. Nor is it to the common people less than a reproach, for if we be so zealous over them, as that we dare not trust them with an English pamphlet, what do we but censor them for a greedy, vicious and ungrounded people? So this uh, censorship uh, assumes that the English people, they do not have any discretion, any judgment, and we cannot trust them with a simple treatise or a pamphlet. In such a sick and weak state of faith and discretion as to be able to take nothing down but to the pipe of a licenser. So it is the image of a tube administering medicine. As a patient is administered medicine to a tube, Milton says that it is assumed that the English people can be administered, you know, truth or knowledge through the pipe of a licensor. Now, therefore, it is, uh, it, it assumes that uh, the English people uh, do not have any judgment, uh, which is uh, derogatory and uh, which undermines uh, or which does not respect uh, the judgment of the people. In conclusion, it reflects to the disrepute of our ministers also, of whose labors we should hope better, and of the proficiency which they are talk reaps by them. Uh, by extension, Milton argues that if the people are assumed to have no judgment, no morality, no uh, responsibility, then we are also uh, indirectly uh, charging the uh, ministers, the priests, who are the shepherds. The priests are support, supposed to spiritually guide the people. 
and we are charging them with negligence because if their words uh, cannot have a sense of morality, a sense of uh, responsibility or uh, judgment, then the ministers are also to be blamed. Uh, this may have much reason to discourage the ministers when such a low conceit is had of all their exhortations. So the priests will also be discouraged uh, when uh, the state does not accept or does not believe in their ability. Uh, he goes on to talk about uh, other countries, how in Italy, for example, he found Galileo in prison because uh, he said something, he wrote something uh, which was not acceptable to the uh, church. So he was in prison. Uh, and uh, he took pride in the fact that he came from a country where there is no such shackle on uh, intellectual work. Now when I have sat among the learned men for the honor I had and been counted happy to be born in such a place of philosophic freedom as the supposed England was. So Europeans thought that I was born in a country where there was intellectual freedom. There it was that I found and visited the famous Galileo grown old. Uh, prisoner to the Inquisition for thinking in astronomy otherwise than the Franciscan and Dominican licenses thought. So uh, obviously Milton wants to uh, wants to make the uh, English parliamentarians feel that they should not be as bad as the Roman Catholic Inquisitions. Milton tries to shame them by comparing them to the officers of the Inquisition who imprisoned Galileo. And though I knew that England then was growing, groaning loudest under the political yoke, nevertheless I took it as a pledge of future happiness that other nations were so persuaded of her liberty. So when uh, Milton visited Italy, he went in his youth uh, to Italy, uh, then uh, England was under uh, uh, the uh, rule of the king and uh, the prelate, that is the bishops, uh, ruled the religion. So people were under the yoke of, under the control of the bishops. And yet, Milton thought that it was a happy situation that other nations, foreigners, thought that England was a place of liberty. But now that the prelates are no longer in power, so that is implied, uh, Milton implies here, that now that the protesters themselves are in power, there should not be this kind of oppression. Now Milton is talking here about inquisition and about uh, the uh, writers and authors who oppose uh, such inquisition, that this is not there could be disburdening of a particular fancy, but the common grievance of all those who had prepared their minds and studies about the vulgar teach to advance truth in others, authors, the thinkers, the writers, they prepared their minds at a higher level above the vulgar teach, at a higher level than the common people, vulgar here is common people. And their common grievance is against, and in their name I shall for neither pray nor for conceal. But the general murmur is that if it come to inquisition in the game and licensing, and that we are so timorous of ourselves and so suspicious of all men, as to fear each book and the sh shaking of every leaf before we know what the contents are, uh, if some who but of late were little better than silence from preaching, shall come now to silence us from reading. So uh, when uh, Archbishop Lord was in power, the Anglican Archbishop Lord, then many Puritan priests were silenced and they were banned, uh, they could not preach. So Milton says that earlier we were silenced from preaching, now we are being silenced from reading. Uh, shall come now to silence us from reading, except what they please, it cannot be guessed what is it, uh, what is intended by some but a second tyranny of our learning and will soon put it out of controversy that bishops and presbyters are the same to us 
both men and female. Uh, so now the bishops have gone. In their place, the presbyters have come. So it is the uh, Presbyterianism, as I told you, uh, which were the majority. This faction were uh, they were the majority in the parliament. And uh, Milton has a lot of grievances against the presbyters because he himself was uh, more radical uh, Puritan. Presbyterianism uh, was very strong in Scotland and in England also the presbyters uh, got power and the other Puritan factions they were uh, silenced or they were kind of subordinated. So old presbyter is a uh, new presbyter is the old bishop writ large. Uh, to start with this, the time such a mere unlicensed pamphlet will after a while be afraid of every conventicle and a while after will make a conventicle of every Christian meeting. So if we begin to be afraid of any publication, then very soon any meeting of Christians will be taken as a conventicle. A conventicle was a secret gathering of uh, heretics, uh, those who are against uh, the received doctrine of the church. These are called conventicles. So Milton says that if we are so much afraid of any opinion, then every meeting of Christians will be considered a conventicle. But I am certain that a state governed by the rules of justice and fortitude, or a church built and founded upon the rock of faith, and true knowledge cannot be so pusillanimous. These are words of praise, reminding the rulers, reminding the parliamentarians that the state uh, should follow the rules of justice and fortitude and the established church uh, should be founded upon faith and true knowledge. And therefore they cannot be pusillanimous. Pusillanimous is the opposite of magnanimous, which is, means small souls. So the state and the church should not be small souls, that they uh, are afraid of every uh, different opinion. And therefore questions uh, this uh, order of things and uh, the way uh, the uh, Presbyterians have taken power in the parliament and uh, obviously censorship uh, is, uh, must be largely their idea uh, which uh, goes against the uh, value of liberty, against the concept of liberty. But now the bishops abrogated and voided out of the church as if our reformation sought no more. But to make room for others into their seats under another name, the Episcopal arts begin to bud again. The uh, cruise of truth must run no more oil. The liberty of printing must be installed again under the political commission of 20. The privilege of the people nullified. And which is worse, the freedom of learning must grown again and to our old fetters. So the Episcopal art, that is the bishops and their, their politics, their uh, you know, schemes, uh, they have again uh, begun to speak. And uh, the cruise of truth must run no more oil. It is an allusion to uh, the Book of Kings, part one, uh, where the prophet Elijah miraculously causes a cruise, that is a small pot, uh, to pour out a never ending supply of oil. So Milton says now the supply of oil must stop because pusillanimous people are in power. So truth must be stopped. The flow of truth cannot be uninterrupted. Again, uh, Milton refers to Bacon. This state of affairs where uh, learning is again in fetters, it raises them and invests them with a reputation. The prelates. This practice raises the uh, bishops to prelates again with the reputation. Uh, 
the punishing of which enhances their authority, said the Viscount St. Albans, and a forbidden writing is thought to be a certain spark of truth that flies up in the faces of them who seek to spread it out. Uh, this is from uh, an advertisement touching the controversies of the Church of England by Bacon, and uh, it is actually a quotation from Tacitus's Annals. So you see the, uh, uh, how the tradition of the humanist work, Bacon quotes from Tacitus, Milton quotes from Bacon. So this classical idea uh, that if somebody tries to uh, extinguish this spark of truth, it will fly in his face. This classical idea continues through the humanists. This order therefore may prove a nursing mother to sex, but I shall easily show how it will be a step down to truth. And first by disenabling dis us uh, to the maintenance of what is known already. The metaphor of nursing mother and stepmother. So it may prove, this order of censorship may prove to be a nursing mother to sex. So everybody was against the rise of sex. Uh, religion was divided at the time into a great number of sects and many of these sects were uh, very radical, extremist and heretical. So uh, everybody was against the rising of sects but Milton said that censorship will further lead to uh, generation of more sects. So it is the nursing mother of sects and it is the stepmother of learning because as the proverbial uh, cruel stepmother, uh, it will extinguish learning, it will try to stop learning from prospering. Truth is compared in scripture to a streaming fountain. If our waters flow not in a perpetual progression, they sicken into a muddy pool of conformity and tradition. This is uh, an allusion to Psalm 85. The truth is a streaming fountain. It, its uh, waters perpetually uh, renew themselves. Otherwise, uh, if it is not allowed to flow, then it will be like a stagnant pool, uh, which is the breeding ground of uh, vices. A man may be a heretic in the truth, and he, uh, if he really thinks only became his, because his pastor says so, or the assembly so determines, without knowing other reasons. Though his belief be true, yet the very truth he holds becomes his heirs. Which means that a man must be able to judge for himself what is true and what is false, and should not depend upon his pastor or upon his church to tell him. So this uh, remains true uh, even today for uh, factions or parties, for example, political parties. Um, there is not any burden that some would gladly post off to another than the charge and care of their religion. There be who knows not that there be of Protestants and professors who live and die in as errant and implicit faith as any lay papist of Loreto. Uh, you know, here Milton refers to uh, the uh, shrine of Loreto. Uh, near Rome. Uh, of course, uh, the Roman Catholic, the Loreto to Milton, they were papists. So, uh, Milton says that there are many Protestants uh, who uh, are as bad, who are in as bad a spiritual condition as Catholics because they depend upon their pastors, their priests, and they themselves do not try to uh, judge and understand religion of their faith. So here Milton blames the uh, tendency of laymen uh, to delegate the responsibility of religion and spirituality to their priests. Uh, this is very much against the uh, Protestant idea that an individual, uh, that there should be no intermediary between an individual and God. So even though the uh, uh, idea of uh, the, the role of preachers and ministers was 
uh, enormous in uh, Protestantism because uh, they believe that sermons uh, actually help people in, you know, uh, being infused with grace. God's grace enters uh, through the speech of the priest. But uh, in the final analysis, a man and uh, God uh, are, are face to face, and uh, one must try to understand faith also intellectually. So for a Protestant like Milton and also a humanist like Milton, faith was not a matter only of, uh, you know, feeling or uh, perception, but also a matter of understanding. And uh, Milton's, they always actively participated in uh, religious controversy uh, to hammer out, to find out uh, what is the true shape of faith for religion. Mm -hmm. So uh, one who uh, gives this responsibility to the priest in the matter of religion, uh, what does he therefore but resolves to give over toiling and to find himself out some factor, factor here means agent, to whose care and credit he may commit the whole managing of his religious affairs, some divine of note and estimation that must be. So uh, these people uh, give the responsibility, hand over the responsibility of their own faith, of their own religion, own spirituality to some agent. Another sort there be who when they hear that all things shall be ordered, all things regulated and settled, nothing written but what passes through the custom house of certain publicans, that have the uh, tunaging and the boundaging of all free spoken truth, will straight give themselves up into your hands, make, it, make, it, make them and cut them out, what religion you please, there be delights, there be the creations and jolly pastimes that will fetch the day, almost from about from sun to sun and drop the previous year as in a delightful dream. So here Milton speaks about those people uh, who uh, uh, depend upon others, just as in uh, um, trade. Uh, Tonnage and poundage uh, was a custom tariff traditionally paid to the king. Parliament refused to grant that the king the proceeds of this tax without their consent. So, just as uh, the king extracts these taxes, tonnage and poundage, similarly in the matters of religion, uh, there, uh, there are these priests who are like agents who exploit the common people in this matter of spirituality. So the idea here is that religion should not be uh, you know, given over to brokers. These are the fruits which the dull ease and cessation of our knowledge will bring forth among the people. So uh, when there is censorship, people's intellectual freedom is gone, they will become dull and inert. And out of this inertia and dullness, knowledge will stop. And then people will depend upon others. They will not think for themselves. So Milton suggests that uh, churchmen should be diligent, that they should be able to you know, pursue uh, religion and uh, keep uh, the flow of knowledge intact. Now in this paragraph on uh, the writing column on page 204, Milton talks about the responsibility of the churchman. But if his rare and plants be not impaled, if his back door be not secured by the, by the rigid licenser, but that a bold book may now and then issue forth and give the assault to some of his old collections in their trenches, it will concern him then to keep waking to stand in watch, to set good guards and sentinels about his received opinions, to walk the round and counter round with his fellow inspectors, fearing lest any of his talk be seduced. So when there is the possibility of new books coming out, 
new books will be published. Then the priests and church men, they will also always remain alert to see, to, to find out that uh, no heretic uh, expression or uh, publication seduces the men, seduces the people. So the priest will play the role of a watchman, but uh, for that uh, there should be this, uh, you know, opportunity or the freedom that new books and uh, so uh, he will uh, have to keep waiting to stand in watch to set good guards and sentinels about his received opinions to walk around and count around with his fellow inspectors fearing lest any of his stock be seduced who also then would be better instructed better exercised and disciplined so if his uh, people the people uh, in his charge, if they are not seduced by false ideas, then they also must be better instructed by him. And God said that the fear of this diligence which must then be used do not make us affect the laziness of a licensing church. So uh, this diligence that the churchmen must employ if uh, there has to be some uh, censorship. Then that should not, however, make us lazy in these matters. So Milton uh, expresses his opinions regarding both the churchmen who might serve as censors and the people. Censorship should not dull the uh, watchfulness of the churchmen or the uh, alertness of the people. What can be more said than when a man, judicious, learned, and of a conscience, for what we know, as good as theirs that taught us what we know, shall not trivially from house to house, which is more dangerous, but openly by writing, publish to the world what his opinion is, what his reasons, and wherefore that which now is now thought cannot be found. Christ urged it as well as to justify himself that he preaches in public. Yet writing is more public than preaching and more easy to reputation if need be. There are being so many whose business and profession uh, nearly it is to the champions of truth. So here Milton argues that uh, any discourse, any uh, expression should be public and should be open to public judgment. Any private uh, communication is always dangerous. So somebody who does not write a book but goes from door to door and uh, preaches something, that person is much more dangerous uh, because he has not published anything so he cannot be controlled. On the other hand, writing is much more public. So one who writes a book puts his ideas in the public domain and therefore it can be read, it can be judged and he can be criticized if necessary and he can correct himself. So the whole exercise is uh, in public view. And Christ asked that uh, he would preach in public and Milton says that writing is more public than you know, personal preaching or pub even public preaching. So uh, more than the word of the mouth, the written word is much more public and open to instruction. Thus much we are hindered and this ignored by the course of licensing toward the true knowledge of what we seem to know. So, uh, the licensing hinders us and uh, stops us from learning, from true knowledge. This ignores means uh, prevented from practicing. So we are prevented from practicing the dissemination of true knowledge by licensing. Then he speaks about the loss uh, of the harmful effects of licensing. Uh, it hinders and deters the importation of our richest merchandise truth. Nay, it was first established and put in practice by anti-Christian malice and mystery on set purpose to extinguish, if it were possible, the light of reformation and to settle falsehood. The greatest 
harm that censorship causes is that it stops, slows down and prevents the dissemination of the richest commodity truth. Now you see uh, this uh, uh, trope taken from commerce, merchandise. So the truth is also considered a merchandise or a commodity, but it is the richest commodity. So Milton is writing for a nation, for a people who were steeped in material culture. Therefore, they understand the language of commerce much better than any spiritual or religious language. So Milton, uh, you know, uh, wraps his discourse in this kind of trope of merchandise. So truth is the richest uh, merchandise and uh, the, uh, and censorship was established by the anti-Christian malice, uh, which was uh, working against the Reformation. So Milton is writing this treatise post-Reformation and warning the Protestant rulers that if you allow censorship, then it is actually then you are actually. Are helping uh, your enemies. You are, you are helping those who are against the Reformation. Truth indeed came once into the world and here uh, Milton uses a beautiful uh, metaphor, a beautiful uh, mythological image from the Osiris myth. Uh, Osiris who was, uh, whose body was, you know, uh, torn into pieces and scattered uh, all over the globe. Isis tried to collect those parts and unify them once again. Uh, Osiris was murdered and his body cut in pieces by his brother Set, identified with the Greek god Typhon. Isis collected and buried his mangled remains. Uh, it is uh, the version of Plutarch uh, of the Egyptian myth of Isis and Osiris in his Moralia. So in Plutarch's Moralia we find this story. Milton compares truth with the body of Osiris. Uh, as Osiris was cut into pieces and strewn all over the world, similarly, truth is dismembered, cut into pieces, which means that we never find the whole truth. And uh, in the context of the Reformation, uh, this truth uh, would be uh, religious truth for Milton. It is much more uh, religious truth than scientific truth, as we understand today. So, what was true Christian religion? That was the burning question of that time. And over that question, people were divided into so many factions. And uh, the Puritans, the Protestants, they, they tried to recover the religion of the Apostles, the disciples of Jesus, the church that existed with the apostles at the time of that. That they considered to be the true church and they tried to recover that idea of the church as opposed to the Roman Catholic Church, which was a very big and rich, wealthy institution. Truth indeed came once more into the world with her divine master. And uh, once more, uh, that is with the advent of Christ. So when Christ appeared, once more truth came into this world. Uh, and was a perfect shape, most glorious to look on. But when he ascended, when Christ ascended, and uh, his apostles after him were laid asleep, then straight arose a wicked race of deceivers, who, as that story goes of the Egyptian Typhon and his conspirators, how they dealt with the good Osiris, took the virgin truth, hewed her lovely form into a thousand pieces. You see here the, um, the you see here that truth is being compared to the virgin girl. So the lovely body of the virgin is torn into pieces hewed her lovely form into a thousand pieces and scattered them to the four winds. 
Oh, why a virgin? Uh, because a virgin is a uh, symbolical uh, virgin stands symbolically for purity. That is uncorrupted, pure, scattered them to the four winds. From that time, ever since the sad trends of truth, such as dust, appear, imitating the careful search that Isis made for the magnetic body of Osiris, went up and down, gathering up limb by limb, still as they could find them. So the seekers of truth, they are the reformers, they are the spiritual leaders who are trying to bring together once again the true Christian religion as it was practiced during the time life of Christ. We have not yet found them all, lords and commons, nor ever shall be. So that means that we have found some, uh, which means that Milton kind of uh, takes pride in the fact that the Protestants, the reformers, they have been some, to some extent able to uh, reform the church and to find uh, religious truths, but the whole of it has not yet been found. We have not yet found the, uh, them all, lords and commons, nor ever shall do, till her master's second coming. So the second coming of Christ, uh, in which uh, the Christians believe, so Milton suggests that we will not be able to regain true religion until the second coming. He shall bring together every joint and member and shall mold them into an immortal feature of loveliness and perfection. Suffer not these licensing uh, prohibitions to stand at every place of opportunity, forbidding and disturbing them that continue seeking, that continue to do our obsequies to the torn body of our martyred saint. We boast our light, but if we look not wisely on the sun itself, it smites us into darkness. And those stars of brightest magnitude that rise and set in the sun until the opposite motion of their orbs bring them to such a place in the firmament where they may be seen evening or morning. An astronomical image, uh, the, uh, the sky and these constellations in the sky uh, change with the uh, rotational change of the earth and with the seasons, the, uh, with the movement of the sun around the, uh, with the movement of the earth around the sun, with this rotation, uh, different parts of the sky become visible and different constellations which are not visible in a particular time of the year, they become visible in another time of the year. And uh, you can say that, and he uses it as a metaphor and says that those uh, constellations that we cannot see now, uh, after the coming of Christ, we will be able to see them. Uh, which means that for man it is always uh, almost impossible to have the whole truth at any point of time. Man does not have that vantage point. So uh, man must wait and man has to piece together uh, the uh, you know, uh, parts of truth and then uh, come at the whole truth or try to come at the whole. The light which we have gained was given us not to be ever staring on but by it to discover onward things more remote from our knowledge. The light that we are given, what light? The light of reason and uh, this uh, we cannot stare on it forever, but we can only gradually discover things which are remote from us. So Milton here uses the uh, metaphor that as one can cannot look at the sun directly, if one does then one sees everything dark. Similarly one cannot always look at truth, but one has to uh, gradually look at parts of truth and come to terms with the whole of it or try to come to terms with the whole of it. But I will take a break here for 15 minutes. Do you have any questions? <laughs>